You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's will be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities. At participating McDonald's, cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. In uncertain times, we could use someone to lean on. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma will stand by you with plan options to fit your budget. If you've recently lost your job, had a baby, or moved, you can still get the health care coverage you and your family need. Financial help may be available for those who qualify. Call 855-452-BLUE or visit hereforyouok.com to see if you're eligible to enroll. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, a division of Healthcare Service Corporation, a mutual legal reserve company. Not to be a backseat driver, but can you say for sure you got the best monthly payment possible on your auto loan? Could it be that you might have gotten a better deal by shopping the loan at a few places and have a lower car payment? Next time, before you go car shopping, visit Communication Federal Credit Union first. Our auto loan experts will find you a perfect loan and get you the lowest monthly payment we can. Communication Federal, your auto loan experts. Restrictions apply. Federally insured by NCUA. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. A new year means it's time for a new home network that can keep up. With Cox Internet, you have the speed and coverage your family needs to stay connected. You'll enjoy Cox's fiber-based hybrid network with options for fast upload and download speeds. And if your household has lots of connected devices, panoramic Wi-Fi may be the perfect fit thanks to its additional control features. Plus, with advanced security on panoramic Wi-Fi, you'll know each connected device is securely protected 24-7. A whole world of connectivity is yours with Cox Internet. Learn more at Cox.com. must be Sunday night. I must be Alan Ray. This must be Sunday night with Alan Ray. How you doing out there? It is the show where we take a look around this giant blue ghetto rock that we're hurtling through space and we ask the eternal question. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? I have no idea. I have nothing. All I can do is just tell you that there's things. It's it's weird. Aver- yes, already planet Claire, baby. You guys didn't know I snuck that in last uh, 
last show I had. Oh, if you're traversing about the interwebs and it's about 9.05 on a Sunday night, get in the chat room at www.klrnradio.com where you will find distinguished and refined gents such as Jeff, Ordy, myself, Eric, Rex, uh, Raptor, and Big Mike. Big Mike! How you guys doing? It's great to have you here. Um, been a good week. Been a good weekend. Exceptional weekend. I, I fulfilled another item on my bucket list. I actually walked out on stage with just myself and an acoustic guitar, and I played a uh, an hour and a half show. And um, it was interesting. It was interesting because I had stage turkeys. Now, I've been playing since I was 15. I've been in bands. I've been doing whatever. Since I was 15 years old, I've always played bass. I've always either played with somebody else, you know, a duet or a band or whatever, three-piece. I've never, one, walked out on stage by myself, did a lot of my own music. Some of my music, some of you have heard. Um, one of them actually got some applause when I started, and I was startled. Um, I mean, you know, it, <laughs> I'm no Oliver Anthony, but just to re- realize that a couple of people knew what song I was doing right off the bat kind of blew my mind. But, uh, yeah, the stage turkeys, they were real. The stage turkeys were absolutely real. There was three, uh, whatever you call it, female turkeys. I... And they loved music. They really, really loved music. In fact, when I started playing, they jumped up on the railing of the stage. And um, one of them actually got on my mic stand. It was like two and a half, three inches from my face. Like it was about ready to kiss me or something. Um, that's when I drew the line. I was like, okay, we got we to gotta talk personal space. Yes, Rex, that is B-52s. That's Planet Claire. I don't know how I went down that rabbit hole. I posted a tweet about it a couple of weeks ago, and I went, you know what? This is some pretty funky, far-out music. I got to have it for an intro bumper. Yes. Why not? It's my show. I can do what I want, man. (sighs) Weird things going about the planet tonight. A few things I can't even, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm going through things, you know, trying to find decent show content, trying to figure out what are we going to talk about. And I uh, really, really, um, I found a habitual sniffer without the last name Biden. This is creepy. This is weird. Okay. This is on Fox. Um, following yet another arrest for the Barnes and Noble sniffer and career sex predator, Kaylee Crowder, one of his victims, is demanding that Los Angeles authorities take the perverted prowler more seriously. I'm relieved that he was arrested again, but I unfortunately don't have high expectations with him being kept there for long," said uh, Michelia Mac- Mac- Witter. Michaelia Witter, whatever. One of at least two women who caught Crowder on video sneaking up behind them in the Burbank bookstore. She was right. He walked out of jail again Friday with Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon's office telling Fox News Digital they did not have enough evidence to prosecute his latest allied crime, failing to register as a sex offender. After Witter posted her encounter on TikTok, the video went viral, and she said at least 20 other women reached out to her with similar stories. Now, I'm looking at this guy. This Oh, my gosh. That is absolutely unbelievable. Believable. This guy has what, what's up with your ears, dude? It, it looks like somebody's like grabbed his ears and I don't know, molded them into a. I don't know. He, he looks like a cartoon character. Anyways, of course, this has happened in Los Angeles. Of course, they're not going to charge him with anything. They're just going to chuck him back out on the street. Um, And this woman says, I've talked with others who are affected by Khalees Crowder, who suffers from PTSD because of him, don't feel safe going out because of him, and I want to know why the justice system isn't taking this as seriously as it is, she told Fox News Digital. Well, let me see. Let me guess, okay? Let me just throw a small hint on you. Uh, Makelia, Matilia, whatever your name is. Probably because the people you vote for, which you look like you vote for these people, are all about lawlessness, disorder, and immorality. They think it's great having people like this out on the streets. 
And you probably voted for the people who put them there. Now, here's the thing. Here's a crazy thing. The repeat offender has been in and out of police custody since at least 2005, records show. He served time in state prison on burglary and robbery charges and on Tuesday pleaded no contest to peeping and prowling. He was freed from custody hours later despite a 60-day jail sentence under California law. He was arrested Friday after allegedly peeping into a family's house where they were, there were children inside on August 6th, okay? August 6th, he was arrested. He was also released earlier this year, partway through a one-year jail sentence for indecent exposure in Santa Clarita. This has been happening for 13 years. What is it going to take for somebody in the justice system to wake up and do something about this person. Is it going to take him to murder somebody? What's it going to take? This is where your justice system is going. And this is as of today. Crowder has not been charged in the bookstore incidents. Glendale police who have repeatedly arrested Crowder over the years only to see the criminal justice system put it back on the streets did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Of course they didn't. Of course they didn't because their hands are tied. The police's hands are tied. The politicians think that this person was just fine being back on the streets. I mean, it's bad enough the president of the United States goes around sniffing women and little girls. Now we got this dude. He's not just doing it. I mean, he's, he's like looking into houses. He's been arrested for all kinds of things. Where did, we, where did we go wrong as a society thinking it's perfectly okay to have somebody like this out on the streets not getting help for their condition? He's obviously sick. He's obviously deranged. He obviously has mental problems. 42 arrests on this guy. And then something bad is going to happen. He's going to be involved in something bad. And the police are going to have to take him down, tase him, shoot him, kill him, something. And he will be made a hero. Oh, oh this, this poor little guy, he can't help it. Yeah, you've had 42 chances to get him help, get him off the streets, get him away from people. And there you have it. Planet Claire is in your Christmas track? What? What? How, how is Planet Claire a Christmas song? Where did that come from, Rex? Somebody enlighten me. Eric, Rex, how is Planet Claire a Christmas song? The guys in chat are saying my intro music, Planet Claire from the B-52s, is a Christmas song. I, how's that? It's like a radio song. It's a, there's, there's CW. There's Morse code at the beginning of it. I don't know about these fellers in chat. Sometimes I question their sanity. Yeah, I do. Um, anyway, <laughs> speaking of Sniffy McSnifferson, Joe Biden, the president of these United States, by 81 million votes. Oh, did they really? I just, I didn't know. Jeff said they mentioned me in his song earlier. Oh, well. Yes. Oh, oh, they're talking about my song. Every every Christmas I look more like Santa Claus. I get it now. I'm not, I'm not paying attention to chat, but I've got a song on, on Spotify and all those places called Every Christmas I Look More Like Santa Claus, and it's the truth, and uh, that's been getting some rotation. I think I'm going to re-sign with the, um, the little site that I was on that gets all of my music on Spotify and iTunes because you know what? I don't care anymore. If you like it, great. If you don't, don't have to listen to it. But it's going to be out there because I got a lot of people yesterday asking me, uh, hey, how do we listen to your stuff? So I got to do it. Anyways, Sniffy McSnifferson, Joe Biden. According to the New York Post, President Biden, the President of the United States, who won by 81 million votes <laughs> used at least three pseudonyms during his vice presidency to send messages to his son Hunter concerning both family and official government business, including meetings with Ukrainian leaders, emails found on the first son's abandoned laptop show. 
Then Vice President Biden emailed Hunter under the aliases Robin Ware, Robert L. Peters, and J.R.B. Ware. Should be FJB Ware. Uh, between 2014 and 2016, keeping his son abreast of scheduled talks when then Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko and Kiev Prime Minister Vladimir Groisman. Among other communications, the post first revealed in 2021. The elder Biden had one of his aides, John Flynn, send his daily schedule to the private email address, Robert L. Peters at PCI.gov, at least 10 times between May 18th and June 15th, 2016. Do you find that odd? I find that odd. Do you find that odd? I truly find that odd. Why would you do that? Um, copying Hunter on a May 26th message with a note about an 8.45 a.m. prep for 9 a.m. phone call with President Poroshenko. Biden had pressured Poroshenko six months earlier to fire Ukrainian Prosecutor General Viktor Shokin, who was investigating the natural gas company Burisma Holdings, where Hunter earned roughly $1 million per year while serving on the board between 2014 and 2019. That in itself, that paragraph in itself... As packed full of questions. Biden pressured Poroshenko six months earlier to fire Ukrainian Prosecutor General Viktor Shokin, who was investigating the natural gas company Burisma Holdings, where Hunter earned roughly $1 million per year while serving on the board between 2014 and 2019. Huh. The vice president who was in charge of Ukraine policy at the time discussed reforms to Shokin's office after the prosecutor's ouster, according to archived readouts of the May 27th conversation. That is the incident where Biden was bragging about coercing them. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. See, I can't do two things at once. Um... Uh, yeah, I was trying to I was trying to keep track of uh, what they're talking about in chat and trying to read this. Uh, yes, Rex, Rex, and, and and yeah, they've got my my Christmas song on there. Maybe I'll do another Christmas song this year. I don't know. It's not going to be a mushy sappy one like year before last because that sucked. I hated it. Maybe I'll do another fun one. Um, what's going on here? How is it? You know. On Thursday, House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer, Republican Kentucky, asked the National Archives to turn over unredacted records where Biden relied on the aliases when communicating with Hunter and his business partners, Eric Schwerin and Devon Archer. Archer told the committee July 31st that Hunter earned a spot on Burisma's board because of the Biden brand and that Joe Biden hopped on phone calls with his son's foreign associates nearly two dozen times. According to White House visitors logs, Schwerin also stopped by the old executive office building to meet with the then vice president in the days surrounding shifts in the U.S.-Ukraine policy. Comer also asked for drafts of a speech Biden gave to Ukraine's parliament on December 9, 2015, calling for reform to Shokin's office and the Eastern Europeans' national judicial system. In other words, Joe Biden, for all practical purposes, got himself into the middle of this Ukraine thing got in over his head. How can we not suspect, wonder, think that maybe, possibly, I mean, is it unreasonable to believe that just maybe everything that's going on in Ukraine right now is a direct result of Joe Biden's illegal dealings, backdoor business dealings, With Burisma, with Ukraine, he's seeing that if Putin takes Ukraine back over, his heyday, his gravy wagon is going to run off the trails. Where is his millions going to come from? And the thing about it is, I, he's not alone. He's not alone. There's others in Congress right now whose kids are on some kind of board in Ukraine, probably making a million a year, two million a year. Doing nothing. The lid needs to be blown off of all of that mess. And I don't care who's on it. Republican, Democrat, I don't care. I want big government corruption to go away. I want corrupt 
big elected officials to spend the rest of their lives in prison with all of the wealth that they took from these other nations put right back into the economy, take it all away from them, just go buy the United Nations building and let the homeless stay there, which is a great idea. New York's looking for, you know, places to put the homeless. Put them in a U.N. building. The U.N. is the one that wants them in America. Why wouldn't you put them in the U.N. building? That's the first thing I would do is I'd just walk in there and say, guys, sorry. Um, United Nations Agenda 2030 says that we're supposed to take like a couple of million um, illegal immigrants a year. They're supposed to just be able to walk right across our borders, and we're supposed to take care of them. So because of that, you know, well, your offices are also going to double with Jose here. Um, this is where him and his family of 12 are going to live. You can still have your desk in there. Might be a little crowded, but, you know, you get used to it. These are your people. These are the people you wanted here. Am I the only one that thinks that way? Put them all in the U.N. building. It's a great, big, tall building. You could probably put 1,000 people in it. Do it. Yes, Jeff in chat. Exactly. I should do a Christmas song about aliens invading. That's not a bad idea. That really is not a bad idea. Green Christmas. Little green men Christmas. Hmm, I have to think about that one. So this is what's going on in our government. And, and the more this stuff unfolds, the more they push Trump indictments. Trump, 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 indictment, indictment, indictment. But what about all this corruption right here with the guy who's currently running the country? Nope, 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 nope. You have to pay attention to Trump. Trump and indictments. Yeah, but we're actually watching what's going on here, and Joe Biden is a criminal. This article goes on to say Hunter didn't only receive heads up about Ukraine from his dad's office. In June 2015, Joe Biden's longtime assistant, Kathy Chung, sent both Hunter and, quote, Peters, unquote, a list of 25 cell phone numbers linked to major political players, including Bill and Hillary Clinton, Senate party leaders Mitch McConnell and Harry Reid, then DNC chairwoman Representative Debbie Wasserman Poodle Girl Schultz, and then Attorney General Loretta Lynch. Hmm. Almost like there's an establishment, D.C. Swamp, who's all interconnected. I'll be darned. Think about that. Now, Joe Biden wasn't getting on the phone and talking about the weather. If you believe it, and when they tell you that stuff, you expect to, they, they really don't expect you to believe it. They don't care. They're mocking you. They're mocking you. They don't care you don't believe it. It's a slap in your face. Ugh. So what do you do? All right, let's take a look at chat. We got chat. And we got Rex. Sorry, Rex. I misunderstood you, Rex. Um, thank you for having my song on your playlist, your Christmas playlist. Yeah, like I said, guys, I'm going to do shameless self-promotions. It's called Every Christmas I Look More Like Santa Claus. You know, the, the season's coming up. I make about a about one one hundredth of a penny every time it gets played. So if you play it like a million times, I'll get ten bucks or something like that. I don't know what the math adds up to, but I'm just Mongo just pawn a game of life. So anything on Spotify I just don't get. But the uh the the avenue that I use to get on Spotify I have to renew, it's only like thirty bucks a year. I don't know why I didn't keep up with it. I think I'm gonna do it though. Um and Jeff in chat, what is being released now is 100% why they are so pissed at Trump. Their scheme has been revealed, and Trump must be a must burn because of it. And, and you know what? You're right, Jeff. Regardless if you like him or not, the one thing, the one thing that Trump did that I will forever be grateful for him is he has an uncanny knack to make people lose their minds and show you exactly who they are. I don't know how he does it. Maybe he is just so annoying that he makes people just go nuts. But he took layers, layers away from Washington, D Washington, D.C. and showed you just exactly how evil, corrupt and against the American people the D.C. swamp actually is. If you, if you trust the federal government at all right now. And let me go on a rant. Indulge me for a few minutes. If you trust the people in the federal government right now, you're an idiot. And I don't even care which side anymore. There's maybe a handful of people that I think maybe you can possibly trust. 
It's exactly. It's a superpower. Trump's superpower is getting people to expose themselves just how crazy and unhinged they are and just how corrupt and evil they are. It's a superpower besides his hair. His hair is like a cape. So, you know, I'm not going to get, I I promised, I vowed, I'm just going to stay away from the whole primaries things. Whoever wins the primaries for the GOP, I'll vote for. Whether I have to plug my nose or not, just because it's not a Democrat, Democrats are destroying this nation a lot faster than the GOP are. And we'll get into more of that later because some funny stuff has come up. But um, indulge me for a minute on a little bit of a rant. Given what we know now, today, today, we have watched, right here, August 20th, 2023, we have watched what this government has transformed into. Connecting the dots, Elon Musk buys Twitter. And one of the things he does is he sends journalists in there. Journalists who, by the way, aren't on the right side of politics. I'm sorry, they're not. But they're a heck of a lot more left center than their colleagues, probably. He sends them in there to dig out, to ferret out, to release these files that show you just exactly how deeply embedded the intelligence community is into all of your media. And I'm not just talking Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, I don't know. Pick one. Pick any of them. Google your search engines, your 6 o'clock news. The federal government has the intelligence community embedded into each and every one of these things. It's no wonder this country remains completely ignorant to 88% of whatever is going on. And when you, when you bring something up to people, that is a fact. This is a known fact a lot of times. If they have not heard it on the 6 o'clock news, they will give you a deer-in-the-headlight stare and go, what are you talking about? It's like when, when I, bring up, I bring up things like the World Economic Forum, pushing for post-humanism, transhumanism, wanting to you, to you to live crammed on top of each other like industrial chicken farms. Controlling everything. People look at you like, what are you, Alex Jones? No. They say it right on their website. When you talk about the United Nations wanting 2 million immigrants a year, legal or illegal, they don't care. They just want them crossing into the United States, destroying our borders. And it's all right there under Agenda 2030. People look at you like, what are you talking about? Agenda 2030, that's a conspiracy theory. No, they... Go on their website. Please, God, go on their website. Just just type UN Agenda 2030, and it comes right up. UN, you know, United Nations website. You can read it for yourself, what they want. They want you out of rural areas, into living centers. It's not a conspiracy theory if they're telling you it's what they're pushing for. They tell you on their website, that the United Nations advisors, and I put in quotes, are in every government from your local county board all the way up to the federal government pushing their agendas. And you can darn well bet the World Economic Forum has bought and paid for most of these people. And if they haven't, the Soros Foundation has. When you point this stuff out to people, they look at you like you're growing horns and they say, well, that you're, you're just a conspiracy theorist. No, the problem is you didn't hear it on the six o'clock news, which back to what I was talking about is completely controlled by the federal government, the intelligence agencies. We've learned that since Elon Musk has bought Twitter, it's come out as fact. It's not a conspiracy theory. Yes, we've always pretty much figured they have, but now it's out there. It's fact that this is what's going on. And people are still ignoring it. They look at you like you're growing horns when you start talking like this. How could you not know it's true? It's all right there. Because I have found that people are like deer. And people don't know this. If you, unless you're a hunter, you don't know about deer. Deer 
when it's at all possible, will take the path of least resistance. If there is a piece of woods that keeps them hidden, and there's a trail in that piece of woods, the deer will go down that trail. Great place to set up your stand. If your people, you will take the path of least resistance, least resistance, if at all possible. You'll turn on your six o'clock news. You'll listen to your whitewashed, whatever, 30-second news blurbs. Government approved, government stamped, given to you piecemeal, like baby food, ground up. And you'll just consider it, well, this is fact. It was on the news, the big, shiny, glowy tubey box there. It, it, it said it was true. So it must be true, or otherwise they wouldn't put it on the news. Not understanding that although the 30-second blurb might not contain any lies, it leaves out most of the truth. It leaves out the whys. It leaves out the things leading up to the events that cast a completely different shadow on whatever happened. But you remained blissfully ignorant, Mr. and Mrs. America. Just because the 6 o'clock news said there's nothing to see here. Just because, yes, ohms. We are like ohms, Jeff. We are like ohms. We take the path of least resistance. Just because you really don't want to understand what's going on behind the scenes. And it's maddening. It's maddening. Politibunny, Sam Janney, today. In a, in a chat room, we're talking about how, how you can really get to you. The, you know, staying, you know, knowing what's going on behind the scenes, being glued to the media and knowing the lies that are him. And when you try to speak the truth, you just get nailed. People get mad. They get vicious. I put out there just for fun. Why is the IRS armed today? Oh, well, they're armed because they're the IRS. They're law enforcement agents. No, they're not really law enforcement agents. They're basically leeches. <laughs> Your mom's a path of least resistance. <laughs> I love it, Ordy. We've reached the bottom of the hour. We've blown by the bottom of the hour. We come back, we're going to talk about California. We're going to talk about Hawaii. And of course, because Jeff didn't have a show, I guess we're going to have to talk about the Russian tragedy uh, that is their space program. <sighs> Don't go anywhere. I'm Alan Ray. It's Sunday Night with Alan Ray. We'll be back in just a moment. As a Blue Cross Medicare member, managing your medications from home is simple. With our easy-to-use prescription drug plans, you can get the medicine your doctor prescribes from your local pharmacy or even delivered by mail. For the trusted care you need and want, Blue Cross will be here with more convenient ways of getting it. Like we've been for more than 80 years. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Confidence comes with every card. To learn more, visit bcbsm.com slash senior options. Hey, Randy, what you doing? Oh, hey, Dave. I'm just making a list of things that make me feel really, really good. Wearing Bombas socks. Trust me, that's number one on my list. Bombas socks feel so good because we use the smartest design and best materials, making them the most comfortable socks ever. Plus, because socks are the number one most requested clothing item in homeless shelters, we donate a pair for every pair purchased, and that feels pretty good, too. To shop Bombas or learn more about how your purchase supports those experiencing homelessness, go to bombas.com slash comfy and get 20% off your first purchase. If you prefer real mornings, shouldn't you have a real breakfast? At McDonald's, we get real about breakfast. That's why you can have a savory sausage biscuit with delicious hash browns for only $1.50. It's time to wake up breakfast. 
single item at regular price. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's will be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities. At participating McDonald's, cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Not to be a backseat driver, but can you say for sure you got the best monthly payment possible on your auto loan? Could it be that you might have gotten a better deal by shopping the loan at a few places and have a lower car payment? Next time, before you go car shopping, visit Communication Federal Credit Union first. Our auto loan experts will find you a perfect loan and get you the lowest monthly payment we can. Communication Federal, your auto loan experts. Restrictions apply. Federally insured by NCUA. I've just never been tested. I'd like to think that if I was, I would pass. Look at the tested and think there before the grace go on. Might be a coward, I'm afraid of what I might find out. Impression I get. written in suggesting that I'm a whack job. Hey, welcome back. It is Sunday night with Alan Ray. I'm your humble host, Alan Ray, insulting the chat room um, unintentionally. Sorry, Rex, and sorry, Eric. <laughs> I didn't know you were talking about my Christmas song. I thought you said that Planet Claire was a Christmas song. I was like, what? Wait, did I miss something? That's what happens when you're tired and you're getting old and you're getting feeble. Your brain's starting to rot in your head. Uh, whatever. Calvin, have a great night, sir. Glad you could stop by. Calvin stopped in, said hey to everybody. You know, really honestly, if you're listening to this show, listen live on Sunday night at 9 o'clock. In fact, uh, every other week, Jeff rolls in at 8 o'clock and does The Lost Wanderer. So when he does that, get in the chat room at 8. Stay for my show through 9. It's a lot of fun. We rip on each other. We have a great night. We talk about your mom. I mean, all the things. Um. Speaking of conspiracy theories, and I'm stealing Jeff's thunder on this one. Yes, I know, because this is lost wonder territory. But you know what? I'm going to go here anyways, because I'm going to do a different spin on it in Moscow. According to the Associated Press, which they're associated with the um, intelligence community uh, of the United States federal government. So you only get the propaganda that they spew. But this one's still kind of funny because it's backed up by just about everybody. Uh, the Russian space agency says its Luna 25 spacecraft has crashed into the moon. Russia's unmanned robot lander crashed after it had spun into uncontrolled orbit, the country's uh, space agency Roscosmos reported. Roscosmos. Roscosmos, comrade. Our, our Luna 25 has crashed into the moon. The launch earlier this month was Russia's first since 1976 when it was part of the Soviet Union. They haven't really, they haven't done anything since 76? Yeah, they have. Come on. I know better than that. The crash comes after Roscosmos. I can't say that. In, I can't say that like I'm Michigan. I got to say it like I, I'm from Russia. Roscosmos has reported an abnormal situation that its specialists were analyzing on Saturday. We have studied it. Uh, during their operation, an abnormal situation occurred on the board of the uh, automatic station, which did not allow the maneuver to be performed with the specific parameters. Okay, now let's stop right there. What they were doing, 
what they were doing was they were trying to get the uh, the the probe, whatever the unmanned spacecraft, onto the lunar south pole. It's particular interest to scientists. They believe that there's permanently shadowed polar craters that may contain water. On the frozen, if it does contain water, frozen water in the rocks could be transformed by future explorers into air and rocket fuel. Okay? And yes, JC, we need to send a, fo- a probe to crash into Uranus. A giant probe crashing into Uranus. Anyways, um, okay, let, let, let's, let's just dissect this story for just a little bit, Okay? Mysteriously, mysteriously. Okay, we have not landed a human being back on the moon since the seventies. Curious, and and all of a sudden we're making a big deal out of hey, we're going to the moon. Okay, we've already done that. Well, no, but we're going to the moon. Okay, so one of two things has happened. Did you actually go to the moon back in the sixties? Did you really go there? Well, yeah, of course. Well, then why haven't you been going there all the time? Well, because because you know excuses. Now come on. Come on, here we are in 2023. Now, I personally believe we did go to the moon. There's people who don't. I respect that. Knowing what we know now about the intelligence agencies and the CIA and all that, and how much wool they pull out of the people's eyes, if somebody came out tomorrow and said, hey, I got, like, undisputable proof that we did not go to the moon, I'd just shrug my shoulders and go, oh, geez, that figures. Even though I was just totally tied into that as a kid. But we're going back to the moon. And the Lunar South Pole is very important because that's kind of where we're planning on building a colony. Russia was trying to get there first. India was trying to get there. People are rushing to get there because if they can do a land grab on the moon, then they can charge rent or something. I don't know. But I think it's curious. I think it's curious. I think it's strange that Israel has sent a probe to the moon, it crashed. Russia, I sent a probe to a moon. It crashed. Who else? Did China do it too? Why are all these probes crashing? They're getting close. Is it because there's something on the moon that I don't know, maybe something that told us not to come back a long time ago, that's sticking to its words and saying, you know, um... <laughs> right, Jeff confirmed it. Jeff is our official space nerd official for KLR and Radio. Japan has crashed. Yeah, why are all these probes crashing on the moon? What, what's, what's the deal? We've landed a lander on the moon. We know what it takes. Why is everything crashing? And of course, yes, um, and yes, India is getting ready to land one, according to this, uh, this article here. If it crashes, I'm going to start asking questions because, you know, some of us think that maybe the reason we haven't been back is we were told by something, someone, some entity, not to come back. Now, I don't necessarily believe believe that, but it wouldn't surprise me if maybe there was a hint. I don't know. Like Amityville Horror, the Amityville House, you know, when they're in there and something goes, get out. You just, you go, you don't come back. Maybe that's what happened on the moon. <laughs> the last set of astronauts to step on the moon, something rolls up from the ground and like, go home and don't come back. Hey, guys, let's, uh, let's call it. Let's get out of here. Let's just not do this again. Abnormal situation. Abnormal situation that caused this probe, another probe, to crash into the moon. Now, some weird things have happened to the moon. And it leads me to wonder if the moon is actually a created entity. Now, being religious, being a Christian, being somebody who believes in the Bible, believes that the Bible holds stories that, a lot of stories, a lot of truth, but truth that is verified through the language and the descriptions that they knew back in those days. Things were created. What if, just indulge me for a moment, what if the moon is actually created? And it wasn't supposed to really be up there um, naturally. Think about it. The way it rotates, the way the same side faces the earth all the time, the way it controls the waves, the way it basically helped create life on this planet. And a lot of people don't know it, but when we landed on the moon, it reverberated for like an hour afterwards. 
Strange things. Odd things. It's a story to keep track of. It's a story to think about. If the Indian one, uh, if that one bites the bullet too, well, maybe we should start thinking about things. All right, let's talk about poor California. Did you see what God did to California? They must have really pissed him off. Um, I see the news has downgraded the end of the world hurricane due to um, climate change. Downgraded it to a tropical storm. Already, uh, already, you're in chat. Are you got? Are you getting the full brunt of this thing? Are you getting the storms yet? Are, are you in there? And yes, right after the the moon really is blue cheese. I used to like blue cheese. I don't anymore. Um, California was supposed to be getting like just this end of the world. Oh my gosh, we're all gonna die. Disaster. And the media was all over. The media loves it. The media loves when bad things happen to California because the first thing they do, and and the California government will back them up on this, is yell, climate change. Well, of course, poor California. Let's give them billions more dollars. Uh, Or he says they're getting a lot of rain. So anyways, after making landfall in Mexico earlier Sunday, Tropical Storm Hillary, it's no longer a hurricane, it's Tropical Storm, has crossed into California. But, 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 big old but, a big old but. It's unleashing strong winds and heavy rains and threatening catastrophic and potentially deadly floods. Hillary's core, they, you notice they only spelled it with a, one L. <laughs> they should have spelled it with two. If it would have been two L's, that thing would have done a U-turn, went right to Haiti. I guarantee you. Um, Hillary's core, another, a core, in other words, it's center, crossed into Southern California Sunday evening, but the state has been feeling the storm's effects since earlier in the day, and the rainfall totals have begun to dangerously add up. We're not used to this level of precipitation generally, certainly not in the middle of summer, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria told CNN's Jim Acosta Sunday afternoon, saying he was worried about the potential power outages from the wind as well as flooding. We're not built for this kind of rainfall. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 back up just a little bit. I got to ask the state of California, the, 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 the government of the state of California question, which is man-made climate change? The drought that you are screeching about saying that, oh my gosh, we're all going to die. We don't have water or the water that's coming out of the sky in droves right now, which is it both, both climate change? No, no, I don't think so. So, to make matters worse, of course, you know, they're, they're millions are facing flash flooding threats and stuff like that. And it does happen in California. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to downplay this. A lot of rain all at once is bad. And I don't care where you are. A whole bunch of rain all at the same time, especially in a place that doesn't get a lot of rain. And it turns like, I don't know, loose, wah, loose dirt into mud that could turn into mudslides and things can get really bad really quick. But to make matters worse, right in the middle of all of it, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake struck California. What did you guys do? God is really mad at you right now. Uh, (laughs) Sunday, 5.1 magnitude earthquake struck Ojai, California. Several aftershocks followed the quake. Of course, nobody died, nothing collapsed or anything, but apparently some houses were rocking out there. It got a little crazy, got a little nuts. Small ship with two antennas on the moon? Yes. Bring it, Jeff. That's the rabbit. That, that's an intriguing story. Legends, Jeff says, legends from various traditions around the world, including Buddhism and, and Native American folklore, Recount the tale of a rabbit that lives on the moon. A small ship, maybe, with two antennas? Maybe. You know, they used the language they had at the time to describe what they saw. And you got to think about that. When you're reading any ancient scripts, and let's jump on this for a minute. Jeff's got a good point here. Back to the moon thing. When you're reading ancient manuscripts, 
you have to understand, they didn't have a word for airplane, for jet, for spaceship. Anything that was floating through the sky was a celestial being, an angel. Whether or not it was or not, we don't know. We don't know what they were seeing. We really don't. There are some pictures of them trying to describe what they were seeing. And a lot of them are very eerie and very similar to things that we fly around nowadays. And that leads me back, you know, to the whole UFO thing, you know, and Jeff and Ordy and I were talking about that a few weeks ago. You know, and I've thought this for quite a bit, you know, putting the big picture together. We, we look at Old Testament scripture. We look at uh, Sanscripts, cuneiforms. They all talk about celestial beings. They all talk about angels. They all talk about, you know, beings that aren't from the natural human beings. What were they seeing? And then we look at today, we look at, you know, they're saying, oh, we've got, we've got ships that aren't of this planet. How do you know? Maybe they are of this planet. Maybe they've been here the whole time. Maybe they're just 99.9% really good at staying camouflaged, staying hidden. And now that we, over the past hundred years, have taken to the skies, we see them a lot more clearly and a lot more frequently. And we could do things about them that the ancients couldn't. We can shoot them down. And our ancients couldn't. What are they going to do? Hurl rocks at them? That's why I say don't, you know, the whole probability possibility thing of aliens. Maybe it's not aliens. Maybe it's a being that's been here the whole time. That helped jumpstart, kickstart the human race. And we just, they're, in, they're interdimensional or something. And every once in a while we catch a glimpse of them. And they're here right now messing around with our, uh, with our jets, messing around with our Navy. I keep my mind open to the possibility. I really do. Because there's, there's thousands of years of stories and eyewitness reports of this stuff. So anyways, California. Okay. You really made God mad. You need to do something. I don't know. Get rid of your uh, governor. Go throw them in a live volcano or something. Appease the gods. Settle it down. We got a few minutes. Let's talk about Hawaii. I have intentionally held off even really discussing this to see exactly what's going on. There's a lot of um, theories flying around Hawaii. Some of them were that the fire was intentionally started. I don't think that really happened, but what I do think is that there are some nefarious socialist progressive companies that are very quickly taking advantage of a situation. If you own property in that burnout area, hold on to it. Do not let it go. Somebody comes to you wanting to buy it out saying, no, no, I'm going to keep hold of it because it's all going to grow back. It's going to be my property. Because I think there's some things going on there that they're trying to get rid of as many people as they can. But right in the middle of this breaks a story. You, you wonder, you all wonder, here in 2023, how a tragedy like this happens. And people are so completely caught off guard. And then a story breaks of an absolute socialist, progressive moron, full of DEI indoctrination. And the New York Post breaks it. It says, Hawaii official concerned with equity delayed releasing water for more than five hours as wildfires raged. And this is a quote from him. Access to water should be predicated on conversations about equity, according to Hawaii official under fire for delaying the water to, uh, during the Maui wildfires. M. Kaleo Manuel, former deputy director of the Hawaii Commission on Water Resource Management, waited for more than five hours to release water during the wildfires that devastated Maui, according to reports. In a live stream debate hosted by the University of Hawaii last year, Manuel described water as a sacred god. 
Let water connect us and not divide us, said Manuel, referring to a water distribution on the island. We can share it, but it requires true conversations about equity. How do we coexist with the resources we have? A former Obama Foundation leader. Part of a program by former president's nonprofit to help participants with coaching and practical skills, practical skill building uh, for social change. Manuel said he considered water a tool for social justice. Let me get that straight. A former Obama Foundation leader. A man, a male, I shouldn't say a man, a male. He's a coward with a penis as far as I'm concerned. Part of a program by the former president's nonprofit to help participants with coaching and practical skill buildings for social change. This is that guy. This is him. This is your uh, M. Kaleo Manuel, social justice champion, directly, directly responsible for the killing of at least 111 people and probably more. And what happened to him? Well, Manuel was transferred to another position within the Department of Land and Natural Resources Wednesday, according to Honolulu Civil Beat, which first reported the story of the delay. So you know what's going to happen to him? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely not dink, because he was an Obama flunky. The West Maui Land Company said in an August 10th letter that, uh, to Manuel that his commission refused its request to divert streams to fill landowners' reservoirs in the hard-hit Lahaina area until the wildfires raged out of control, according to a report. Sources told Honolulu Civil Beat that Manuel had asked the company to consult with a local farmer about the impact of water diversion before approving their request. A quote, we watched the devastation around us without the ability to help, said the company in the letter. We anxiously awaited the morning knowing that we could have made more water available to Maui Fire Department if its request would, or if our request would have been immediately approved. No, instead this moron, this idiot, this progressive socialist that Barack Hussein Obama put there is directly responsible for the murder of 111 people. The man should hang. End of story. And anybody you find like that, that does stuff like that, hangs with them. I'd like to know what happened there. I'd like to see him stand trial in front of the whole United States. Face the families of those who died in that fire. Face the families who lost everything in that fire. And explain to them why equity was the reason he didn't release water that could have helped them put out the fires. I'm sure he'd cry victim, roll over, play dead. I don't know. Get off the hook. That's just how these people are. We have come back around to the top of the hour. I can't believe how fast this hour goes. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on a Sunday night. If you listened live, you're hanging out in chat. Thank you very much, guys. Hey, if you didn't, get in there next Sunday night. I'll be here, hopefully, Lord willing. Spouting off, shooting my mouth off about things. Having fun, picking on people. Keep it locked on klrnradio.com all week for some of the best programming you're ever going to run across. You can find me on Twitter at 2 cynicl 65 Until we talk again, God bless. Keep your powder dry. You may need it. We'll talk again soon. (laughs) 